Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode 123 of How I Built It Today. My guest is Lindsay Miller, the Partner Marketing Manager of Liquid Web. In this episode, I'm really excited to get into the nitty gritty of Liquid Web's partnership program. As somebody who's part of a lot of affiliate programs and somebody who runs his own affiliate program, Lindsay's insight is incredible because, look, a lot of affiliate marketing managers will say that they have a partner program. But I take a pretty hard line in that if you're just giving me a link to share and I'm doing all the work, that is not a partnership program. You're just paying me a commission. You are doing no work. I'm doing all the work and you're paying me a small fee to do that work. But it is different in the case of Lindsay Miller and Liquid Web. As a member of their partnership program, I can tell you that they work directly with their partners to write content for them, to do webinars with them, and to just in general help them increase sales. It's what I really like to see out of a partnership program. And if I continue my affiliate program in earnest moving forward, I am definitely going to take a lot from this episode. So... Uh, Lindsay has a lot of really great information for us. I think that you will really enjoy this, whether you are part of a partner program or an affiliate program, or you run your own. There's lots of stuff to glean here. Be sure to stay till the end of the episode as I'll be talking about uh, the part two of how I built my tech stack for my podcast course. I'll be talking about WooCommerce, something that Liquid Web does very well. So uh, without further ado, let's get to the interview with Lindsay. Of course, that's after a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Plesk. Do you spend too much time doing server admin work and not enough time building websites? Plesk helps you manage servers, websites, and customers in one dashboard, helping you do those tasks up to 10 times faster than manually coding everything. And let me tell you, I recently checked out their new and improved WordPress toolkit, and I was super impressed by how easy it was to spin up new WordPress sites, clone sites, and even manage multiple updates to themes and plugins. With the click of one button, I was able to update all of my WordPress sites. I was, again, incredibly impressed by how great their WordPress toolkit is. You can learn more and try Plesk for free at plesk.com slash build. That's plesk.com slash build. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of How I Built It, the podcast that asks, how did you build that? Today, my guest is Lindsay Miller, a good friend and the partner marketing manager at Liquid Web. Lindsay, how are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me on, Joe. Thanks for coming on the show. Now, we've met, uh, well, we met once, but have seen each other several times. Most memorable for me, I think, is Cabo Press a couple years ago, because I feel like we had like good bonding time there. Yeah, absolutely. It's easy to bond with you, though. I mean, oh. like, who couldn't, who couldn't just fall in love with you immediately? Uh, you are going to make me blush, but it's the same for you. <laughs> you are uh, a fantastic person. I'm very excited to have you on the show talking about... Uh, affiliate programs, essentially, right? Um, So why don't we start there with um, a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, so I have been around WordPress for a few years now. Um, I was kind of laughing because I was at WordCamp Phoenix this last weekend. That was my very first WordCamp in 2010. Um, And so I know I've kind of been on the periphery of WordPress for a while. And then officially, as far as like getting paid directly, um, started two years ago, um, making money in hosting and at Liquid Web and with WordPress and um, really took a much deeper dive into it than just um, hanging out with a bunch of cool WordPress people. <laughs> uh, that's that's fantastic. And so when you joined uh So actually, because I already know this and I think it's interesting, what did you do (laughs) before you got professionally into the WordPress space? Yeah, so um, I, you know, way back in the day, um, I was a political consultant, um, mostly focused on uh, political fundraising in the state of Oklahoma and really, really liked it. Didn't set out to do that. 
but um, you know how you kind of fall backwards into things. I think a lot of people in politics, that's what they do. <laughs> they don't choose that. It just kind of happens. Um, but I did that for several years. And then I um, did a little bit of a stint in the nonprofit space where we created something called the Div, um, teaching kids to code in Oklahoma. And then went more into work over at iThemes and Liquid Lab. But I've said this, you know, especially in the last several months as more of like my past work history has come up. Um, it was that time in politics that kind of really set me up for success in roles that I do now. Nice. And uh, that's, that's perfect. Cause I was actually going to ask you that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so first your primary um, responsibilities over at liquid web is to kind of manage affiliates or work with uh, work with liquid web partners. Yeah, so it's changed a little bit, actually, over the last couple of years. So I first came on to start building our influencer network of WordPress and people working in WordPress, bring them on board, let them, you know, take our um, products for a spin, see what they thought, and then, you know, go from there. But just kind of, you know, how we do in WordPress, creating some feel good Mm -hmm. um, relationships and, um telling them a little bit about Liquid Web. So Liquid Web, you know, has been around for over 20 years. So almost as old as I am. Um, <laughs> and they've been around for a really long time. And and really, they're the new people to the managed um, WordPress hosting space and managed WooCommerce hosting at that. And so um, we really had a lot of work to do. And we wanted to create good relationships and not put a lot of pressure on people to say, um, you have to like this or you can't be our friends anymore, you know? So, um, (laughs) anyway, so I started doing that. And then in the fall, I moved over to our strategic alliances and partner team. So I was on the product team. Now I'm over here working in this more, um, streamlined role of what are some strategic alliances in the WordPress space that we can, you know, go after and work towards to promote everybody and partners and affiliates are also part of that role. So, um, how can I build up not just within WordPress influencers, but people just working in the WordPress space, um, and, you know, help, both sides of that. So anyway, that's what a long answer, really long answer, but that's what I do. <laughs> that's yeah, that's great. That makes a lot of sense. And full disclosure, um, I am a uh, part of that influencer network. I am uh, uh liquid web is one of the few affiliate programs where I like actively participate in, cause I'm not admittedly the best at affiliate marketing. And uh, maybe that's some stuff that we could talk about today. So uh, as we move into, um, kind of how, how you're managing uh, the strategic partnerships and this influencer network. How, how did your background in uh, politics and, and working in the nonprofit space uh, help you become better at, at that position? You know, I think, so when I think of affiliate marketing in my head, I always just think of people um, using coupons and um, optimizing their content page and just trying to like make sure that their page is at the top of Google, right? Like that's what we think mm-hmm. of. And I think combining more, not nonprofit, but more of my politics and then also just my knowledge of WordPress has been why we've been able to be successful because in politics, you pay attention to a lot of people, not just the one on the stage. You get to, it's all very relational and you go, okay, you may not be the one speaking today. You may not be the one the fundraiser is for. You're just coming here to hear that person. But oh my gosh, I just found out that you also have a very influential business and you really like my candidate. And therefore I'm going to pay attention to you and get to know you better. And that's how you're successful in politics, especially in fundraising for politics, um, is knowing everyone, not just a few people. And then on top of that in WordPress, what do we do best? Like we help people like that. We're just nice and we're just good and we help them build their business. Um, in full disclosure, and Joe, you know this, um, your listeners may not, but I'm married to Corey Miller, and literally the motto of his company uh, is make people's lives awesome. Like, <laughs> right? And so, like, yeah. that, and I, and Corey and I have been together for almost 10 years now. And so you go, 
that, so that's my WordPress background is just mm. being helpful. And then my politics background says you want to be helpful to everybody, not just to like the quote unquote most important people. And so that's how I've applied that to what I do now. Um, and why I think liquid web is becoming very successful in that space, um, in WordPress. That's, that's fantastic. And yeah, absolutely. I will link to, um, Corey Miller's episode of how I built it. He very graciously came on in like the super early days. I was like, Hey, you want to be on my show? And he was like, yeah, absolutely. I'm like, I have no listeners. Um, so, uh, it, it was, he, I feel like he helped me get my start a little bit. He was like, I think the third or fourth guest or something like that. So, oh, that's um, awesome. yeah, so I'll be sure to link to that, but, um, I think you're absolutely right. It, it all comes down to, uh, good relationships, right? Especially today. Uh, I just finished reading, uh, Seth, uh, Seth Godin's, this is marketing. And he talks mm-hmm. about how people want to be able to trust the, the products and the companies and, uh, just blasting ads out there is not going to develop trust. Relationships are going to develop trust. Absolutely. So. And, and following through on them too. I mean, and you can say this from a role of actually working with me. It's like, I, I don't want to just be self-serving. It's mm-hmm. as I say, I talk to someone and I go, what can we do together? Is there something we can do together to build up both of us? Is there um, some content sharing that we can do and good quality content, not just, um, hey, Joe, please continue writing blog posts about how amazing Liquid Web is. It's like, no, mm-hmm. let, let, let's not do that. Let's talk about um, how to speed up your WooCommerce store. And if part of that happens to include Liquid Web, then fabulous. But And, and then other ways too, right? Like, what can I do to help you meet your goals, even if they're not directly related to mine? Um, just being a good person and doing those things to help out the people who are also helping you, even if that means in different ways. I don't know. It always, it comes back to you in the end, right? Like it just, it just all works out, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, like people ask me how I kind of tie return on investment to like going to word camps. And um, Mm -hmm. basically if I meet somebody and I form a good relationship with them and then we can help each other, that's that's a return on that investment because I met somebody at a word camp that I never would have met. Uh, and, and we were able to work together to, to, like you said, to help each other. Um, and I, I think that's fantastic. And and so you, um, I think you characterized the WordPress community, especially very well there. Absolutely. You know, and even talking to my, some friends at other hosting companies. So liquid web just came on as a global sponsor, um, for WordPress this year. Nice. So super big deal. We're so happy to finally be able to like give back to the WordPress community in that way. Um, but the first thing I did was reach out to a couple friends who work for different hosting companies and say, Hey, I know you're traveling a lot and you have been for WordCamps and we're going to start like, how do you do it? Do you have some like best practices that you would give me? And like, there was no hesitation. Like, they helped me out and they gave me some tips and advice for how to succeed and how to answer those ROI questions that they knew I was going to get, you know, from our mm-hmm. leadership. And I, I have definitely, even in my own role from direct competitors, um, been more successful in the last month just because of, you know, who we are and who we are at WordPress. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. I, I love that. Um, and so as, as we start to talk about this a little bit more and, and forging the right relationships and building out um, a network of influencers, uh, what kind of research did you do when you came onto Liquid Web to kind of figure out who should I reach out to? What should I be doing with these people? What's an affiliate program that works for them? Yeah. So have you ever heard of the Colby or the Colby A? It's Colby with a K. It's like one of those um, personality tests. Have you done this before? Oh, yeah, I have not done it, but I've heard of it when you, when you okay. it that way. I'll, I'll find a link and put it in the show notes. Yeah, please do. It's it was such an incredibly enlightening test. Like it, um, I shouldn't say test assessment. I, I don't know. What are we supposed to say, Joe? Like whatever. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I took it several years ago. And one of the things I learned about myself, which should have been obvious looking back, is so on a scale of 
I think it's one to 10, not zero to 10, but on a scale of one to 10, there's four categories. And one of those is fact finder. And I am a nine out of 10 on fact finder, which means um, within my personality, no matter what it is, like um, we're choosing a new vet for our dog, or I'm picking out a pair of shoes, or I'm going into a new affiliate role at Liquid Web, I fact find first. So my decision making has to come from research. And then I use my other, you know, skills or qualities to come up with the answer, but I lead with fact finding. So if I went into all of the research that I did, um, we would not have enough time and um, you'd kick me off your podcast. But um, in general, I... I looked at other affiliates or affiliate programs in the WordPress space that I thought from my perspective were successful. And I went, what are they doing? What are they providing? Um, What do I think would be of value if I was an affiliate? And then I also leaned on some of my team members. Um, We have a really... Uh, I don't know what what would be the word experienced WordPress team at Liquid Lab, mm-hmm. um, some quote unquote famous or infamous names, if you will. <laughs> um, and so I asked them. I said, you know, what if what have you guys heard? What do you think would work? What you know, we're talking to um, our friends. I'm going to be asking them to do this. Like what. What should we provide? Um, And so I did all of those things. And I kind of just started keeping spreadsheets and moving things over to the columns that I liked or I thought would be helpful. Um, And then I also kind of leaned on on iThemes experience and their training programs that they've done and went, huh, what if I could apply that to not only our affiliate program, but our partner program and just say, hey... You know, affiliates aren't just affiliates for the most part, right? They have other jobs. Affiliates kind of like the icing on the cake of how they mm-hmm. actually pay their bills. And so I'm like, mm-hmm. what are they doing during the day? And how can I help that business? So I talked to um, Joe Casabona. I said, hey, Joe, what are you what are you doing? I want, I want you to come on board as an affiliate, but tell me about your core business. And you say, well, I have this podcast that millions of people listen to, and that's my that's my core business. But yeah, I, I do I do some affiliate things on the side, and I can go, huh? Okay, so how can I help you build up your listeners? What can I do to help promote the podcast? And I so and I you know don't lead with that other conversation. But anyway, so those were all the types of research that I did, and I just started coming up with ideas for webinars and, um, blog posts, eBooks, um, just all, and then they'll talk about the marketing collateral. So can I create things that you can share on social media that you don't have to create? You just like, like it and can do it, but it's different enough from somebody else who's sharing it. So people don't know that it's coming from me. And so just started like building up this huge library and researching and asking people questions. Um, and I wish I had like a definitive like place where I went and took this course on a, on affiliate marketing um, to give you because wouldn't that be nice? Um, <laughs> but I but I don't. It was just um, you know leaning into friends and relationships and Google, right? And just kind of looking at yeah. what was out there and um, picking and choosing what I liked. So, well, first of all, I would never kick you off the podcast. I, I didn't have to follow <laughs> back on that. Um, we would break it into as many parts as we need to, right? But, um, I, I love, I love what you said about affiliates aren't just affiliates, right? Uh, that's a little bit extra. There are, there are professional affiliate marketers out there, but by and large, Absolutely. most people aren't. I'm certainly not. I, if I just relied on affiliate marketing, uh, we would not be living anywhere. Um, so, um, I, I really like what you said about tell me about your core business, right? Because nine times out of 10, somebody will reach out to me. They'll say, hi, Joe, I read your blog. I think you'd be great for our affiliate program. And then just a link to their affiliate program. And I'm like, I I need to use your product if, if I'm yeah. going to be an affiliate, right? Um, so tell me about your core business. And of course, uh, you you and Liquid Web have been very helpful in in getting this this podcast off the ground and launching it and uh, I appreciate you know the places where you featured me on your blog and I'm I'm happy to talk about your product because not only have you helped me but when I've had feedback 
you were very quick in assessing and answering that feedback too. So um, yeah. I think everything you said is great. And that's, I think that's what makes me continue to want to be an affiliate, right? Because I've signed up for a million affiliate programs and I barely promote any of them because it's too much time. I don't have the collateral. I don't know what to do. And, and I think you've done a lot of of the legwork for me and, and you make it easier for me to, to promote your stuff. Well, thank you. I, and I think you hit it on something too that I, that we did. And I wish I could take credit for this. Um, but it was not me. It was actually Chris Lemma. Um, when I started, he goes, I want you to make a list of every single person, you know, in WordPress. And then whenever you get done, I'm going to add to it. And if you know them personally, like that was the, the caveat, if you know them personally, reach out to them and offer them a year of free hosting. And just let them try it. And I was like, yeah, that's such a, that's such a good thing. Um, we gave out a lot of free hosting and I, and I still do, um, let people try the products. I'm like, how can you promote it if you don't like it? And if it's not a good fit for that audience, like it, it just doesn't make any sense. And from a partner standpoint or even a strategic alliance, right? Like if we're going together with like your plugin or your, your own business and doing something together, um, I wouldn't enter that if I didn't know you had a good quality product that worked for the people that I would be introducing you to. And so, um, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. I think that's another key component of bringing anyone on board, no matter what role that is, right? Partner, affiliate, or, or alliance, um, is just to make sure they actually like what we're doing. And it's okay not to, right? <laughs> but they have to try it. This episode is brought to you by Pantheon. Starting a new project? Looking for a better hosting platform? Pantheon is an integrated set of tools to build, launch, and run websites. Get high-performance hosting for your WordPress sites, plus a comprehensive toolkit to supercharge your team and help you launch faster. On Pantheon, you get expert support from real developers, best-in-class security, and the most innovative technology to host and manage your websites. You can sign up a new site in minutes with a free account. You only pay when it goes live. That is my second favorite feature to Pantheon, only to the easy ability to create dev staging and live servers and push to GitHub. It's very easy to set those things up on Pantheon. So you can head over to Pantheon.io today again to set up a free account pay only when it goes live. Thanks so much to Pantheon for their support of this episode and this season of How I Built It. So we've talked about, uh, I think, a lot of things that can funnel us into the title question, which is how did you build it? You know, we talked about relationships and the research you did to provide content. So um, if you feel like you you might rehash a lot of the stuff you just talked about and how did you build the specific affiliate program that you have now, um, maybe you could also provide us some advice on if I were to start an affiliate program today, what are the things you would recommend? Yeah, absolutely. And I will say I um, am very lucky in the fact that Liquid Web already had quite a robust program. Um, I just got to come on board way after the fact with other people who have been doing affiliate and partner marketing for a lot longer than I have and say, oh, you guys did a great job. Let me see how I can tweak it and make Lindsay type of improvements, um, you know, my own little special brand, if you will. Um, but if I were to talk to you about building a brand new, like, and I don't even like calling it affiliate. Can I be perfectly honest with you? I don't like calling it yeah. affiliate at all. I would, I would, um, counsel you if you will, or give the advice, um, to never use the word affiliate, um, to use the word partner, Because, and that's really what it is. Instead of like, you think of affiliate as you just take all the things and you send money my way. Um, I think if to do it the WordPress way, like quote unquote, the WordPress way is to do it like that partnership. So it should be more of a partner community um, and it should be reciprocal. So it's not just here's the links, here's a coupon now go out and talk about me a whole bunch. It really should be this, um, we build each other up 
and create something even better. Um, like you said, you, you have feedback, like, can you be an affiliate for, um, Oh, like mod cloth mod cloth has affiliates right like the clothing is like an online clothing mm-hmm. thing um they have affiliates and like if i didn't like the shirt i bought from them do you think they're going to take that feedback and change the styling of their shirts um <laughs> right but if you right, build right. a program like if you joe build a program where you have partners and they come back to you with feedback and then you go oh yep, you're right. I should have done that differently on my dashboard. And then you do it. I mean, and then they feel heard and now it's better for their people. And now they even get to promote that. Like Mm -hmm. it, it just, there's just no other better way of doing it. Um, so first, yeah, change how you, what you call it. Think of it entirely differently, like change your entire mindset around what uh, an affiliate is and look at those partnerships and then think about ways that you can help them. So get to know the people that come into your network, get to know their businesses, and then think of creative ways that you can help them. Um, And it's beyond a partner directory and I'm going to ruffle some feathers. This is when I get really, (laughs) really crazy. Um, you know, and we do this at liquid web too. We're like, if you become a partner, we're going to put you in our directory. And you're like, Oh wow. With the other 450 partners you have (laughs) all building WordPress, like, and you know, it's great. There's a link back there. I mean, there, there are some nice benefits and your name is there. I mean, you know, don't, don't quote me too hard if, you know, my leadership of liquid web is listening, but, um, <laughs> but, but anyway, but there are more benefits to think about than just saying, oh yeah, we're going to put you on our website. It is saying, mm-hmm. what are you doing? Can, can you come on and do a webinar? So I do one or two webinars a month. Um, and anyone in my partner network can say, Hey, I have an idea for a webinar and I'll talk to them about it and we'll do a webinar. Um, and so it's, it's just, it works perfectly and it helps build their business too. And not just ours. So anyway, that, yeah. that's my advice. Start from, start it over and think about it different. I think that, I, th- I think that's great. So um, first of all, I'm going to change the title of this episode when it publishes to you uh, <laughs> from building a good affiliate program to building a good partnership program, because I think you're absolutely right. I think that the two things that have uh, bothered me most about, we'll, we'll say, affiliate programs is people will email me and they'll be like, hey, we want a partner. And I'll say, how? And they'll say, join our affiliate program. And I'll say, how is that a partnership? Um, right. Like, here's here's a link now, promote us, is not a partnership. And then the other thing that's always kind of bothered me about people kind of using the affiliate program as, a, as an out or a crutch is I'll reach out and I'll say, like, hey, I'm having this event or I am looking for sponsors for the show. And I think you would be a really good fit. And when people come back and they say, I think you can make more money in our affiliate program, I always say, well, then it would behoove you to just sponsor me outright, right? Because now you're saving money. Like if you really that believe more that. Sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, and, and don't get me wrong. I have a, I have a partnership program myself, um, but I, I generally don't use it as a crutch. I try to be um, communicative and let them know I've promised them that they'll be the first people to know what I'm working on before anybody else. And if they need me, if they want to have me on for an interview or want me to provide quotes or graphics, I'm happy to do that. Um, and, and a lot of that is, is I've, I've, I guess stolen it from you because I see what you do and I find that super helpful. And I think, um, my, my partners might find it helpful as well. So, um, I think that's fantastic. Now, as as far as kind of um, techniques or ex- exclusivity, I, I'm not sure how I want to word that, but um, you did mention uh, coup- coupon codes. Um, I say coupon, and I'm told I'm wrong. Um, so uh, I, uh, y- <laughs> you offer coupon codes, um, and and I've noticed like landing pages are. Do you find that those things are? are helpful to kind of help your partners convert? Yeah. So that's an excellent question. I think this is where some of the traditional affiliate marketers might have a different opinion than someone like me, who's just 
be, to be very frank, making it up as I go. Um, <laughs> and then they would say, absolutely, right? Like we, you put the coupons out there and um, you create the specific landing pages that's maximized for conversions. And, and there's definitely, there's definitely a place for that. Um, there is a lot of revenue that comes to liquid web in these very traditional affiliate marketing roles um, where like, so here's a, a good best practice, right? So a landing page for an affiliate should never have a chat box or a phone number listed. I know it blew my mind too. I did not know this um, because if you think about that, you've now discounted the coupon um, for that affiliate to use so that their person's coming, plus you're paying them X amount. So it's a percentage or it's a flat rate. Hopefully it's very generous, you know, type of thing. Um, but then also now if they're going to chat a salesperson or if they call in and talk to a salesperson, that's not only paying or taking up their time with that now double paid person because they're getting a discount right. plus an affiliate commission. Um, but then if that salesperson closes the sale, especially in our company, they're also um, allowed to get a percentage on that sale because that's their job is to close sales. So if we did landing pages with chats and phone numbers, you're almost in a way paying four different ways. And yeah. on a, on a $99 you know, a month plan. And so um, you have to kind of really think through some of those promotions in regards to landing pages and coupons. Um, you can also uh, inadvertently saturate your market with too many coupons um, or too many steep um, discounts. I, I like to offer them to anyone who works with me and for a couple of reasons, um, especially in WordPress we really feel uncomfortable with affiliate links because we think people believe if they're clicking an affiliate link that maybe we have um, a different reason for promoting that product rather than just liking it. Um, right. And I think WordPress in general, we really aren't like that. You know, um, mm -hmm. we really do believe in well, the things that we talk about, but not everybody thinks that and we don't want to you know, have our motivations questioned. So if I give you a coupon that says, Hey Joe, anyone you send gets a month off. Um, and they don't have to click the link and they can just, you know, put in your coupon code. You still get that affiliate commission, um, because that's how our system works without you having to say, thanks for listening to the podcast. Now go click this link. If you're interested in liquid mm -hmm. web, they can just use your coupon and it just feels, it just feels a little bit cleaner. Um, yeah. But I also pretty much straight across the board, anyone in my partner network gets the gets the same coupon. And then we do specials, right? Like if we do a end of the year sale or a summer sale, um, we'll say, hey, all of, you know all partners are getting the exact same discount to their coupon, or they get a special coupon that they can use. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that's um, a nuance that has to be considered. Um, but anyway, so but your question was about landing pages. Um, and I will, I want to, right. I will create landing pages for anyone who, um, feels like that is useful for their audience, um, or help them create, you know, a blog post on their own site. So sometimes people will create a blog post. I'll help provide content where it's appropriate. And then I kind of help them go through and audit it and say, okay, this, you should put a call to action here, or you should add a link mm -hmm. here and try to provide, um, value that way. Nice. And again, that goes back to you are partnering with them to, you're not just saying here, just build a page. Here's your link, whatever it's, here's how you can make this better. Right. I want to help you make money and I'll make money and it'll, everything will be good. Um, that's really interesting about the, uh, not having a chat bot or phone number. Right. And it, it, it makes sense because the affiliate or the partner should be the person who has sold that person on the hosting, right? Like they should mm -hmm. be, the salesperson in that regard. That's why they're getting, you know, I'm not just going to tweet your link and hope for the best. Um, I'm going to write a blog post or, uh, you know, one of my recent episodes of Creator Toolkit talks about how um, you're, you're a good solution for e-commerce or whatever. So um, I'll link that in the show notes as well. Before we move on to kind of the plans for the future, I do want to touch on, you mentioned a, a, a generous rate. Have you found that, there's a good uh, maybe rule of thumb for 
uh, picking a affiliate commission that motivates uh, your partners to go out and really promote your product? Yeah, you know, I think that it's still in flux. You know, we had um, a meeting last week on iThemes hosting. So we just released an iThemes hosting product last year. We're still trying to dial in the pricing on it. So you say, and, and I'm learning a lot from the leadership at Liquid Web because they've been around for a really long time. Um, and you go, okay, so you have a $7 a month product. And how much is that a year? And you're wanting to pay out 150 you know, on that. And they're going, uh, we don't make that back mm -hmm. until you're, you're three. Okay. Right. That may, that may not be a good fit. Um, and so it's a lot of just kind of doing the math, right? So we say, okay, at $7 a month, or maybe it's a $12 a month product. So $12 a month. And then that gets to closer to 150. Okay. Maybe that's a hundred dollars for affiliates. And so some mm. of that is just doing the math on it. Some of it is looking at what your competitors do. So, um, WP engine is, you know, they're friends of all of ours. Um, I have nothing at all bad to say about them. And they kind of set the standard. Um, they started doing affiliate stuff a really long time ago. And they kind of let the WordPress community know how it works. You know, they didn't really do some of like what we do, the benefits we do on the partnership side. Um, and we can touch on that in a little bit just to kind of talk about those differences because pretty much everything with them, as I understand it, is just straight up affiliates. Um, and so we kind of had to follow that model and we didn't have another choice except they're the leader in the space. Um, mm -hmm. They're still the leader in the space. And so um, we we just tried to, to mimic that. So our manage WordPress and manage WooCommerce plans get a $250 flat rate. Um, I don't mind like telling people that because anyone can find out <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> what, what that rate is. Um, and then when we get into some of our smaller plans, you know, we um, lower that if it's a, you know, a $39 a month plan, it's not as high. Um, and I find that 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 feels good. It makes people feel like their effort was worth it. Um, if they write a blog post or send out one tweet and they get one commission off of that, it makes their time that they spent writing that or promoting it worth it. Um, and I, I love celebrating when, when those come in with the people um, who get those commissions. It's a really fun um, part of my job is to send an email and go, Hey, you got five you know commissions this month and be all of us awesome. be really excited about that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. That's, that's fantastic. And um, again, I'll just say like that, do the math that makes sense. It kind of already sounds like, um, you know, for your affiliate program, there's like some assumption that people who sign up for hosting will stay with the hosting company at least X amount of years. Um, so I'm sure that math kind of goes into it as well. Uh, whereas for somebody like me who's selling an online course for uh, maybe like $100 one time, $100 commission is not going to make any sense. I'll make no money. Exactly. I themes for years on their products, um, just because apparently I'm so good at telling all the things, um, did a, did a 25%. So 25% of the sale was their commission rate. And that also felt really good. Um, if people were talking about, um, products that did cost significantly lower and weren't necessarily a multi-year, um, point of revenue for them. Uh, so that makes sense. And then, um, our partner side, we have a couple of different, um, benefits and I'm going to keep some of it cause it's plans for the future. Um, but just on that financial aspect, um, we share, on the, I'm going to use a hosting term, so I sound smart, but the MRR, the monthly recurring revenue. Um, so with some of our agency partners, um, let's say they have 50 sites or a hundred or sometimes more, um, and they bring those over and they add so many, you know, I think it's, I don't remember, is it some kind of a percentage? Um, they can get upwards of 15% a month back. And it's literally just cutting a check and sending it back to them. Um, and that's, that's just a financial incentive. We offer a lot of other um, perks as well, but that's just to kind of compare that. So whereas other hosting companies in our space just do the affiliate thing, you have a couple of choices. You're like, okay, do I get paid one time at 250 or 
do I keep my clients there? And over the life of liquid web making money, I also do. If I get 15% back a month on what we're paying for hosting, then okay, you know, that that's a no brainer in right. a lot of cases. Right. Absolutely. And then, I mean, and then to that point, when you think uh, we might move hosts, now you have to think I'm going to lose that 15% commission and time to migrate or whatever. So, um, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, so, but again, it makes sense. Um, you know, I, for a while, I would always sign up my own clients on their hosting account with my affiliate link. Um, and I would let them, mm-hmm. I would let them know too. Like, I was, it wasn't just like hand wavy stuff or whatever. I was always forthcoming with that. But, um, it was an added added benefit. I was bringing a new client to a platform I was familiar with. So, um, cool. Well, uh, as we wind down uh, our interview here, um, what are your plans for the future of the partnership program at Liquid Web? Yeah. So one of the things I think I'm most excited about and really able to bring in my perspective on is this like partnership network and how can we continue to just be helpful and like that's what liquid said we're like the most helpful humans Mm -hmm. in hosting like our little tagline um and it works well with my personality because ultimately that's what i want to do um thankfully I, I don't have like sales numbers like stamped on my forehead. Um, and so because I don't, I'm just able to say, what can I do for our partners? What can I do for our network to help them? And one of those is, and I am not the leader of this at all, but I'm on the team that is bringing a brand new partner portal um, to liquid web. And it's actually a WordPress multi-site install. Wow. Like, I don't know who has built it, but like, I can't believe that they're not a super big deal in WordPress because as soon as they showed me this dashboard, I was like, this is literally built in WordPress and it is. And it's, it's an incredible tool. Um, and and we're so, so excited about it. And so basically anyone who, um, comes into our partner network or is already there now gets access to this like quote unquote partner portal, but it has webinars, training, co-branded content. Um, it lets you sign up for the webinar that you want to go to straight from the dashboard because they're using the, using gravity forms. I know it's like so cool. Um, and then we're getting, we're going to just like load that up. So you can request time with me as the partner marketing person. And we can talk about co-branding opportunities. You can request to present a webinar to the Liquid Web community. And you can imagine how many um, emails and that goes to. And then that recording then gets turned around and put back in the partner portal. Mm-hmm. Um And so the possibilities with that in and of itself are so endless and it's incredibly well built and it's, it's going to be awesome. Um, And we're, we're having several meetings a week on that right now as we're fleshing out um, the content and the possibilities for it. So that, that, I, I don't know, I would venture to say even beyond the revenue share that we do in and of itself is worth um, looking at liquid web for a partnership just because it is a very direct way to help people build their businesses. Yeah, that, that sounds exciting. I'm, I will definitely keep an eye out for that. Uh, Cause it sounds, I mean, a, a, an, an easy one-stop shop to make and you know, a, a partner's job easier is always good. So that's, that's fantastic. Uh, we'll definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, now, yeah, thank you. As w- as uh, as we come to the end here, I do want to ask you my favorite question, which is: Do you have any trade secrets for us? <laughs> any trade secrets? I think I already gave them out. I told you how much we pay for affiliate commission. I told you what <laughs> iThemes pays for affiliate commission. Um, I told told you about the chat box and the phone number. Yeah. I mean, I'm, apparently, I'm just an open book when I talk to you. Is um, <laughs> the answer to that question. <laughs> um, so, just like any other normal conversation, if you want to, if you want to know any secrets, just ask Lindsay, and she tells you. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I, I will say this, um, and I don't think it's too much of a trade secret, but WordPress and WooCommerce are for sure the way of the future, and it is how Liquid Web sees the future. Um, we're investing 
a lot of time and a lot of money with the global sponsorship to say, hey, WordPress, um, we're here and we're here to stay. Um, we've done an incredible amount of development onto WooCommerce hosting. That's very, very exciting for us. And I think is an exciting time for our WordPress ecosystem just because we we were able to come late to the game and manage WordPress in and of itself. But with the backing of this hosting company that is known around the world, that has some of the highest NPS scores and definitely no hosting company, you know, um, comes close to where we are on customer service and say, okay, we get to be creative and inventive. And not only did, you know, Chris Lima and the team on the product side say that, but our leadership, right? Like, all of the the most important, smartest people at Liquid Web said, this is it. It's WordPress and WooCommerce. So um, I feel like that's a little bit of a trade secret, right? Um, not only is Liquid Web leaning into it, I think a lot of other people are too. Those of us that have been around um, for a long time knew it would happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now it's, it's WordPress's time to shine, if you will. Nice. What a great trade secret. I love that. Um, and I'll just add on to that that I, I believe it too, right? Even if you asked me like six months ago what I should what one should do to set up an e-commerce store, I would have said, well, if you want easy, go to Shopify. And if you want custom and can pay a developer, go to WooCommerce. And now I'm like, go to managed WooCommerce hosting. Like that's you'll have a site. You'll you'll pay and you'll have a site and you'll be ready to go. So um that's that's fantastic. Lindsay Miller, thanks so much for your time today. Where can people find you? Uh, so I talk the most on Twitter at Lindsay Miller WP. You can learn more about um, Liquid Web just at liquidweb.com. Uh, there's a ton of things, so just go slash manage WordPress. <laughs> nice. And um, LinkedIn, I've been doing a lot on LinkedIn as well. And so you can find me, um, I'm LinkedIn slash Lindsay Ann Miller. Uh, those are my places. All right. I will be sure to link those and everything we talked about in the show notes over at howibuilt.it, hosted by Liquid Web. Uh, Lindsay, thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. It was so much fun. Anytime you need me to come on and tell more secrets, I'm happy to. Thanks so much to Lindsay for joining me today. I always enjoy talking to her. I consider her a very good friend, as well as a wonderful person to get insight from on marketing and affiliate programs. Her background is super interesting, as you heard, and her trade secret about WordPress and WooCommerce uh, for sure, being the future, uh, you know, Liquid Web is putting their money where their mouth is there. And of course, they put a lot of effort into their uh, customer service, which it shows absolutely. So, uh, my question of the week for you is how has Lindsay's advice affected the way that you approach either your partnership program? or the way that you're going to approach joining partnership programs in the future. Let me know uh, by emailing me, joe at howibuilt.it, or on Twitter, at jcasabona. I want to thank my sponsors for this episode, Plesk and Pantheon. They have both sponsored the entire season, and without their support, I wouldn't be able to put forth such a quality show with amazing guests. So thank that. Uh, thank Thanks again to them. Uh, Definitely check them out. If you liked this episode, be sure to share it with a friend. Maybe you know somebody who's struggling with affiliate programs and this is the kind of stuff that they need to hear. Go ahead and share this episode with them. Uh, The link directly to this episode is howibuilt.it slash 123. So you can share that URL with them. You'll also find all of the show notes we talked about over there. So let's continue the conversation about how I built my podcasting course. And specifically for these last two episodes, I've talked about uh, how I've built the, uh, the tech stack of creator courses. I got deep into the LMS, uh, the learning management system, last week. And this week I want to talk specifically about WooCommerce, 
because WooCommerce provides a huge part of the functionality, right? I And I chose WooCommerce because I wanted to have a full-on e-commerce platform with a shop and a shopping cart. So LearnDash does support the ability to just sell courses uh, one-off and even group registrations with some extensions. But I liked WooCommerce because it gave me the flexibility beyond selling just courses. Maybe I want to sell ebooks or other educational material. Maybe I want to have tiered plans where there's a, a basic course, an advanced course, and a master course. And uh, instead of creating three separate products, I can create one product. Um, it also integrates fully with LearnDash, so I don't need to worry about trying to bridge the gap and making them work. But aside from the LearnDash integration, it integrates with so many other tools, and some of the tools that I'm using require LearnDash, things like Metric, which is fantastic for reporting. It's absolutely incredible reporting, much better than what you get in stock WooCommerce. And so I use that around tax time. I use that to see uh, you know, the, the lifelong value of my customers and so much more. Um, I also use Jilt for abandoned cart emails. Uh, so Jilt will make, will see when somebody adds a product to their cart, if they know the email address, which they'll try to capture uh, as early as possible. Uh, and then the person does not finish the transaction. I can send a series of emails to those people to try to get them to come back and make the purchase. And abandoned cart emails can recover up to 25% of abandoned carts. So that's a considerable amount of income depending on what you're selling. Um, and finally, I'm using Affiliate WP for my own affiliate program. You just spent uh, the whole episode listening and learning about affiliate programs and partnership programs. Uh, and I'm using Affiliate WP for my affiliate program. So um, that integrates really nicely with WooCommerce. It helps me uh, make fans out of my students. Uh, I've, I've since created a new policy where you have to be a student to join the affiliate program because you need to be able to vouch for the quality of the course. I don't just want you uh, signing up just to make money off of my courses um, and, and adding it in a, in a big long list of courses you should take. I want, I want people to actually vouch for my product. So Affiliate WP works really well with WooCommerce for that. Uh, so that's the whole tech stack. Uh, I, I forget if I mentioned the theme last week now, but I'm using Academy Pro, uh, which is a Genesis Child theme. It gives me some um, some flexibility over that. Uh, I actually recently did a whole talk on this, so I will include a link to that talk, uh, the slides and some of the resources uh, over in the show notes over at howibuilt.it slash one, two, three. But that is it for the tech stack. Uh, so... Next week, I'm going to talk a little bit about my plans for the future, both of the website and of this course. Um, and if you're thinking, hey, you know, you've dispersed this story over a series of weeks and I don't really have a clear uh, picture, you know, like maybe you want to hear it all together. Don't worry. After the season ends, I'll be releasing a bonus episode where I tell this story all together. So uh, these are just maybe little teasers for that bonus episode. Anyway, I want to sincerely thank you for listening. And until next time, get out there and build something. <laughs>